On this episode of South Hawk Computing, we're going to do a software-defined radio, and that's coming up next. Warning. The following video is performed by a trained professional. It is meant for educational purposes only. Please do not attempt to try anything you see here. Enjoy. Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hall Computing, and today we're going to be doing a software-defined radio. I have to admit, this is one of my on-again and off-again hobbies. This actually appealed to me because you don't need any sort of ham license for it. So, this particular one here ran me about 54 bucks on eBay, and it came with the actual device there. It comes with the R820T and A232 chipset built in. It also came with a 12 inch, very minimal antenna that won't get you any sort of receive on here. I pretty much gave up using this antenna. These particular devices don't have a lot of gain on them, so that antenna won't do you any good. And it came with a standard USB cord. So here at the shack, I have a CB radio set up and I wanted to get this device to work off of it. So what I had to do was get a male SMA connector, which is this guy here, for that jack over there. And the other end is a RG58 or PL259 female connector. And basically what I do here is screw it into there. And the other end goes into my antenna. So since I can't use the antenna that came with this particular device here, I am using my CB radio antenna, which happens to be a Serio 827 vertical 10 meter antenna. This one here happens to be 1.4 meters long. And that's it for the hardware portion of this. So let's hop on the computer. Let's see how we get this set up. In this particular example, we're going to be using SDR Sharp and we'll take it from there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is obviously make sure your antenna is hooked up to your RTL SDR and we're going to plug it in with its USB into this machine here so it could start detecting what exactly it is and we're gonna pop up this window here make sure it does its thing. Now it's important to let this finish before you continue with the actual configuration but we can start to download the SDR Sharp. We do that by going to Google, searching for SDR Sharp, and as you can see I've already clicked on it, so I'm going into there, and then I'm going to this little icon here for SDR, and now I'm going to click download. I'm going to say save. Now you'll notice that the file size for this SDR application here is very tiny. Well, that's because it's not actually the application, it's just the link for the installer. So we're gonna do that coming up next. So we minimize this, go to the downloads folder, and I'm gonna drag this, whoops, I'm gonna drag desktop. I'm going to right click and say extract all. Correct. And basically here, you're just going to double click on the install.bat. Now you may not see this .bat on your particular operating system because you don't have file extensions turned on. Just double click on the one that says install. If all goes well, it'll tell you what version you have uh, downloaded from their site and press any key to continue. And there, now we actually have the application installed. Let's check this guy here. We have to, again, let this finish, so we'll be right back. Okay, so you may or may not get this, depending on how your computer is set up, but on mine, just by plugging it in, it was able to see the actual device that we plugged in here. So, I'm going to close this, go back to the SDR install folder, and I'm going to go into SDR Sharp. Then I'm going to scroll all the way down to the 
Z-A-D-I-G dot E-X-E. Now again, you may not see the dot E-X-E on your computer, but this is the application you want to run first so it behaves properly in the SDR Sharp. So let's run that. And here under Options, we want to say List All Devices. And now here's a kind of a tricky point. Um, this particular machine doesn't have a lot of things plugged into it, but the one that you want is Built-in Interface Zero. And here, it already has what we need to change it to. It had this particular device installed, but we're going to replace it with this USB driver. So let's go ahead and do that. Now for this particular one, we got to do a couple things. First off, let's go to here, and we want the RTL SDR, well, dash SDR USB. We're going to hit the little gear icon here. And we need to change, oh, well, it does detect it, which is good. And we need to change this guy here to this the 2.048 and this guy here we have to do the Q branch Close. okay and now to do a quick test all you have to do is hit the play button to see what we're going to capture over the airwaves now as you get here we're actually picking something up hopefully um, I'm going to lower this just in case the audio is a little too overpowering while I'm recording here. But as you heard, we actually had some audio that we're picking up. And this is where you're putting in the frequency on top here. Um, one thing I didn't know at the time is to go up or down, as you can see here, when you're pointing to each digit, that will dictate which direction it goes in. I kept on clicking and couldn't exactly figure it out at that time. So... And it's not like I actually read the manual for this, unfortunately. So I also want to say that I am not an amateur radio operator. So any terms that I misuse, I know, shame on me. It just It's one of these hobbies that I've always been interested in and I enjoy partaking in, especially when it comes to this sort of uh, radio operations and whatnot. Let me find a different frequency to show you what else this thing could do. On this particular frequency here, I found a transmission. And how it differs is it's on lower sideband. Now, how do I know this is lower sideband? Well, AM always has a carrier. So you will have a center point that constantly gives out a signal doing the upper and lower sideband, making up the AM. Now, because this one here doesn't have a center point and it's only going up and down as this gentleman is talking, it pretty much means that this is either lower sideband or upper sideband. You could also see him showing up down here. And if you need to widen or shorten the frequency here, you could do that to get better fine tuning on it. Now in this example here, you could see there's an AM carrier here, noted by that solid thick line in the center of everything. Pretty interesting what you can find uh, when you're on these frequencies. There you have it everybody, a very basic tutorial on how to get your RTL.SDR device to work with SDR Sharp. Nothing too crazy here, but the setup could be kind of cumbersome, so I just wanted to help out people out there with this. As always, if you like what you see here, leave a comment below, give it a thumbs up, and even subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Take care everybody, this is Dan from Southall Computing, and as always, until the next time.